back to the next session on rehabilitation and yes welcome back to the next session of rehabilitation and retrofitting of structure scores in the last session i was uh, discussing regarding the retrofitting material that is frp composites okay in which we are going to use as a retrofitting material in order to strengthen the concrete structural elements we'll move on to the next topic in this session okay that is epoxy resin which is an adhesive widely used as okay are in civil engineering in two ways okay this epoxy resin they are going to use it as a epoxy mortar and also they are going to use in a crack eel as a epoxy injection okay so in these two application okay let us know what exactly this epoxy uh, is or what exactly the function or properties of epoxy okay so that you can uh, look into that that epoxy resin can be used both in mortar and also as a crack eel injection next coming to this the various adhesives apart from uh, epoxy the various adhesives used are epoxy that is one polyester resin acrylic resin and polyurethane resin so these are the widely used resins or polymer resins which will be used in uh, civil engineering in this epoxy is the predominantly used for preparing epoxy mortar or epoxy concrete and also for epoxy injection okay why why this epoxy this epoxy resin possess i mechanical and adhesive strength i mechanical and adhesive strength properties more desirable for civil engineering application okay because of these two things that is high mechanical and adhesive strength properties because of these two properties in epoxy resin we are going to use this epoxy widely in civil engineering industry next epoxy resin when cured with different hardness it offers a wide range of properties that means after putting the epoxy resin inside the mortar or as a crack injection okay or crack healing injection okay after it get hardens after it because initially it will be in the liquid form initially it will be in the liquid form after injecting after injecting as a crack heal or after putting inside the mortar once it get hardens once it get hardens so these are all the desirable properties you are going to obtain that is i adhesive strength as i mentioned low shrinkage during curing okay you can eliminate the shrinkage problem exceptional dimensional stability natural gap filling properties thermo setting resistance to chemical and environment okay so these are the things okay you can obtain by using epoxy resin next how what is the application of this okay this epoxy will be used in two ways as i mentioned one thing the epoxy will be used as a crack repair and another thing the epoxy will be used as a epoxy mortar or epoxy concrete okay so coming to the epoxy for crack repair the most appropriate method of crack depends upon the whether the crack is active or dormant cracks okay i have already been discussed in the module okay number 2 that is in the crack there will be two types one is active cracks and dormant cracks that is inactive cracks what is the difference between these two active crack means okay day by day length wise and width wise it will keep on increasing okay active crack means day by day length wise width wise it will keep on increase that is called active crack so dormant or inactive crack means okay whatever the crack that has been formed okay whatever the crack that has been formed it will be left as it is so no increase in length no in okay no increase in width okay so that means uh, usually it will be called as non structural cracks okay predominantly the active cracks will come under structural cracks so the structural cracks have a capacity that is to increase in length and increase in width okay so that's why 
so this epoxy as a repairing material will play a very very major role okay when it is active crack okay active cracks may be due to that's what in crack due to in inadequate provision of movement of joints in the structure especially okay when you are not able to provide a proper joint between the two concrete structural element okay at that particular instance you can see this cracks okay so those cracks you can heal it from this epoxy the injection of or that means the, the whatever the epoxy which have been prepared the injection of low viscosity Pre, okay please remember this okay it is a low viscous material okay which is essential okay low viscous epoxy is a possible repair method of crack between 0.02 millimeter to 6 millimeter so this is the crack width we can heal the crack or we can repair the crack using epoxy resin next there are wide range of low viscosity epoxy system okay and which depends upon the temperature of application this is very important at what particular temperature you are going to apply the epoxy resin okay that will vary on the epoxy system and capability of bonding to moist concrete shrinkage thermal and elastic properties of hardened strain so in all these properties the potential of epoxy system will rely that means depending upon the temperature depending upon the problem arised on the side okay based upon that problem you are going to accommodate or provide the epoxy system as a crack healing material next apart from this one more thing have been mentioned okay the crack can be healed by epoxy and another thing the epoxy can be also used in mortar or a concrete so it has got a two applications in the civil engineering okay the epoxy resin systems are superior in almost all properties to concrete okay the adhesive strength of epoxy resin is 50 times more than that of cement okay if you compare the adhesiveness of cement and epoxy resin okay the epoxy resin is 50 times more than that of a cement concrete so that is a fantastic thing about the epoxy resin next the use of epoxy in mortar is recommended only in okay this epoxy is little bit costly compared to the uh, normal cement concrete okay and this application will come into the picture only when there is emergency of repair or when the crack is too much okay and uh, one more thing uh, if no epoxy system are available what is the conventional material you are going to use in order to heal those cracks normally we are going to use a cement grout okay the cement grout is a normally used crack healing material or crack repairing material okay in order to heal the cracks okay so that's why this epoxy system will be used in very emergency condition okay so when there is a, uh, a chance of okay what i can say the uh, the crack is more or there is subject that means it depends upon how exactly the concrete structure has been subjected to the various condition okay if that cement grout is not able to heal those crack at that circumstances we will depend upon the epoxy resin system okay and uh, one more thing and also i'm going to explain in the later slides how exactly this epoxy injections will be uh, used how exactly the crack will be healed okay next the use of epoxy in mortar is recommended on the emergency repair that's what since they have a low modulus of elasticity because they have a low modulus of elasticity that's why they will be used in emergency time and i creep than most portland cement products it has got a i creep okay because of these two things epoxy resin system will be okay used in emergency condition one is low modulus of elasticity another one is i creep because of these two limitations okay it will be used in emergency condition mainly the epoxy resin will be used in repair fillers such as fly ash or silica fume you already know why this fly ash why this silica fume will be used okay or must when workability is to be improved or to minimize the use of resin automatically when you're going with to increase the workability inside the concrete or mortar you already know that fly ash plays a very very major role okay so that is about a small introduction about epoxy resin okay but their application as a epoxy injection 
the epoxy resin as a epoxy injection in order to heal the crack which I am going to explain in detail in the next slides. Okay. So just I have introduced the, the epoxy resin. Okay. Epoxy resin as a system how exactly it will function and what are all the properties it will work okay, or it will improve in the civil engineering scenario. Okay. So next coming to the next topic that is concrete chemicals or chemical admixtures. Okay. So there are the two ways they are going to call it, concrete chemicals, the chemicals used in concrete or I can say chemical admixtures. So this particular topic I think in lower semester you have been data in detail you have been studied okay at what circumstances or what is the role of admixture all those things again I am going to repeat here okay the chemical or concrete chemicals. So let me define first what is concrete chemical or admixtures. An admixture is defined as a material other than water, aggregates, cement and other okay used as an ingredient inside the concrete or mortar okay added to the batch immediately before or during the mixing i will repeat i will repeat admixture is an ingredient other than your cement aggregate water which will be added okay during the time of mixing or before mixing okay so a two range we can add okay so this admixture okay uh, plays a very 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 important role inside the concrete okay so when you say that the concrete will become special when you say that concrete will become a special or i can say it is a special concrete okay if i want to call a special special means in terms of properties high workability okay good strength durability properties okay if i want to call these things or if I want to say that the concrete possessing so and so properties, then this admixture plays a very, very, very important role. Okay. So mainly these admixtures will be used as a water reducing agents. Okay. That means by reducing the water reducing, okay, by reducing the water, you can enhance the compressive strength of a concrete and other properties. Okay. Okay, and also apart from this, major thing does by the admixture is it will enhance the directly influence the workability of a concrete. Okay, let us see that. So the different types of chemical admixtures are water reducers, that is plasticizers and super plasticizers. Next is retarders, accelerators, air in training agents. So these are the different types of chemical admixtures and their different types of admixtures role will come into the picture depending upon the condition okay so let me start with the first one water reducing admixture water reducing admixture as the name itself indicates okay this particular admixture is used inside the concrete in order to reduce the water content or water cement ratio inside the concrete okay let us see that Water reducing admixture are used to reduce the quantity of water okay, required to produce concrete of a certain slump. Reduce water cement ratio, reduce cement content or increase. That means by reducing, that means this water reducing admixtures is, will act like a water reducing agent. That means whatever the water cement ratio you are going to add inside the concrete, okay, that can be reduced by addition of this chemical admixture. Next, typically water reducers can reduce the water content approximately 5 to 10 percent. That depends upon the chemical admixture you are using. That depends. For example, if you are using plasticizer, you can reduce it up to 10 percent. If you are using super plasticizers, I hope you know what is plasticizers and super plasticizers. Okay, so if you use super plasticizers, you can reduce the water content still more. Nowadays, hyperplasticizers has come into picture. Hyperplasticizers. Nowadays, all RMC industries are using hyperplasticizers. So that you can reduce more water content. You can bring down the water cement ratio to 0 0.35, 0 0.3. That is the amount you can bring down. Okay. 
So adding a water reducing admixture to concrete without reducing the water content can produce a mixture with higher slump. Okay, that means without whatever the okay slump okay possessed by concrete with increase in water content. Okay, the same slump you can obtain by reducing the water content by adding the chemical admixture. So that is what the thing. Why sir, why, why we need to reduce? Okay, the various properties we can enhance. That means you already know that reduction in water content will increase the strength. Not only that, the very very important property you are going to possess here is by reducing the water content, you can enhance the durable properties of concrete which is very very important in terms of a concrete properties so that you can resist all the physical causes, chemical causes which we were discussed in module number 1 and 2. Okay, by improving the durability properties, we can reduce all these physical causes and chemical causes. Next, an increase in strength is generally obtained by with water reducing admixture as the water cement. That's what it is. By reducing the water cement ratio, you can increase the okay, strength of a concrete. Okay. And uh, one more thing uh, regarding this because this is a widely used admixture. That's why I want to stress more upon this. The three type of uh, okay, water reducing agents are plasticizer, super plasticizer, hyper plasticizers. Nowadays in market, they are using two things. One is SP that is super plasticizer and another one is hyper plasticizer. Is it clear? Okay. And coming to the this is the what I can say trade name. Okay. Coming to the chemical way. Okay. Super plasticizers have a three different chemical compound. That is sulfonated melamine formaldehyde compound. That is FMF. Next is sulfonate naphthalene formaldehyde. That is another thing. And one more thing is polycarboxylic ether based. Okay. Earlier we were using or nowadays some RMC are using sulfonated naphthalene or sulfonated melamine formaldehyde compound super platicizer or hyper platicizers. Nowadays all RMC are using polycarboxylic ether based super platicizer or hyper platicizer. So this PC based super platicizers has got a good potential so that you can reduce more water content and enhance the workability of a concrete. So please note this point. Nowadays in RMC they are using okay, the polycarboxylic ether and sulfonated naphthalene. Okay. Predominantly used is PCE. Okay. And uh, one more thing uh, we need to perform the test for using the admixture is simply we cannot add the admixture. We need to check the suitability because as per IS 9103 it says that the whenever you are going to add admixture inside the concrete, it should possess certain qualities. Okay. All those qualities that chemical admixture or concrete chemical should possess when you are going to use as a water reducing agent. Okay. That means whatever the water reducing admixture you are using, it should contain lesser amount of chloride. That is one thing. The second thing, because you already know that if you uh, if that particular chemical admixture has got a more chloride content, it will damage the interior properties. It will immediately cause corrosion. And another thing, by reducing, okay, by increasing the chemical admixture content inside the concrete, it will damage the properties of a concrete. That is one thing. And another thing, increase in chemical admixture content will delay the setting time of a concrete. Please note this point. Please note this point, very very important. Increasing the dosage of chemical admixture or concrete chemical will delay the setting time of a concrete. That means you cannot remove the far mark. Okay, it will delay. Okay, that's why in order to check, okay, whether this particular chemical admixture or concrete chemical, especially water reducing agent like super platicizers and hyper platicizers, we need to perform certain compatibility test. Compatibility test. Because this concrete chemical or concrete admixtures, okay, will, which will be having a compatibility with different types of cements. Okay, that means whatever the hyper platicizers or uh, 
concrete chemical which is compatible with the one particular cement may not compatible with the same dosage with other type of cement. Did you get my point? For example, if I am adding 0.5% of by weight of cement, that is if I am using Ultratech company, 0.5% of, okay, that weight, then automatically, which, is, which will be compatible, that may not same holds good for Ramco cement. It may demand 0.6%. That's why we need to perform the compatibility, okay, so that you have been already been studied in one lower semester, so which you are going to study or assess the compatibility of admixture by performing Marsh cone test, by performing Marsh cone test, okay, by performing the Marsh cone test, you can, you can optimize the dosage, you can optimize the dosage to be added inside the, inside the concrete. Is it clear? Hope you got un understood the concept. So this is the regarding the issues. So now uh, let us go ahead with a very very important thing. What magic? What magic does by this? What magic does by this uh, concrete chemical inside the concrete? So let me see here. Once the cement and water combines. Once the cement and water combines all the cement particles okay will flocculate like this okay all the cement particles will combine like okay in the macroscopic way if i am going to write down it will be something like this okay so now whatever the water that will be there okay are added inside the concrete that will be held inside this Okay, so the cement particle, okay, that will flocculate and whatever the water you are going to add inside the concrete in order to enhance the workability or in order to possess the workability inside the concrete, those water content will be held in between or inside the cement particles so that no water can flow between the cement particles. At that particular instance, this chemical admixture, this chemical admixtures will come, okay, and will try to, will try to, okay, settle on the surface of a cement particle by creating an anion cation effects, okay, okay. So, this particular, okay, chemical admixture will sit on the surface of a cement particle so that whatever the water that will be held inside the cement particle will start flowing so that you can enhance the workability and one more thing you can ask a question sir whether they will not combine again no here they will create a repulsive force or repulsive action i hope you studied that is called zeta potential effect that is called zeta potential effect or repulsive force okay so this zeta potential effect or repulsive force will not allow the cement particles to combine again okay will not allow the cement particles to combine okay which will in that which will uh, in turn what i can say increase or enhance the workability of a concrete so this is what the job does by the chemical admixture inside the concrete. Okay, whatever the water you have been added inside the concrete, so those water will be responsible for developing or enhancing the workability and also for the hydration purpose, for development of strength. But those water will be held inside the cement particles. Hence, we need to release that held water. So that's why this particular chemical admixture will combine with each cement particle and will okay allow this okay chemical whatever the water that has been held inside the cement particles to flow easily. So this is what the job does by the chemical admixtures. So this is what called I can say flocculation and this is what called deflocculation. Just like a grapes, just like a grapes, okay, all the cement particles will combine. Okay, it will trap all the water. That is called trapped water. Okay, or held water. So, those trapped water we need to release between the cement particles by adding the chemical admixture. So, this is what, okay, uh, what I can say the job does by the 
chemical admixture. Hope you have understood the concept of this thing. So in the market, the widely used concrete chemicals are FOSROC, BASF. Okay. Next, coming to the next chemical or chemical admixture or concrete chemical, that is retarder. Okay. What is retarder? A retarder is an admixture that slow down the chemical process of hydration so that the concrete remains plastic and workable for a longer time than concrete without the retarder. So now, if you want to maintain the concrete in plastic condition for a longer time, I will repeat, if you want to maintain the concrete in plastic condition for a longer time, for example, okay, you will be having an RMC plant or you will be, uh, I think uh, in the site you will be ordering for RMC plant, okay, or, or ready mix concrete, Though RMC concrete which will be situated very far from the site. Maybe I think I can say one hour or something like that. That means that RMC truck to reach the site which requires one hour. Okay. Then that circumstances whatever the concrete okay that will be there inside the truck mixed or whatever the concrete that has been mixed or while okay coming with the concrete. Okay. So that particular concrete okay will try to get hardened Okay, try to get hydrate and get hardened. So this is what the property that concrete has got. Okay, but but once you are going to deliver the that particular concrete to the site, okay, that particular whatever the concrete that has been hardened or set, you cannot pump. And whatever the concrete you have been brought, it will be waste. What can you do for that then? What is the solution for that? So the solution is we need to go for a retarder. This retarder will help you in maintaining the concrete in more okay or maintaining the concrete in workable condition or will maintain the concrete or make the concrete to remain in plastic condition for a longer time so that you can pump the concrete. Did you get my point? Okay. And also one more thing. Okay. And also one more thing. This retarder also you need to conduct a laboratory trial. You need to perform a laboratory trial inside the concrete. Simply you cannot add the concrete chemicals. Once again the compatibility test you need to perform. What is the compatible of retarder inside or with the concrete? Simply by adding a dosage will create an adverse effect. So you should also, okay, you should note all these things. Okay. Next. Retarders are the chemical that delays the setting of the concrete by an hour or more. That's what. If you want to delay. And also very important thing. Uh, increase in dosage of retarder. Increase in dosage of retarder. Will increases or drag the setting time of a concrete. I will repeat. Increase in dosage will drag the setting time of a concrete. Did you get my point? Next. They are especially used in hot weather to counteract the rapid setting cost. Right, that's what. So when you're going to pour the concrete at a circumstances of March, April, May, or if you want to pour the concrete in okay, hot humid condition or hot weather condition, at that particular instance, okay, the concrete will set or harden very fast. So in order to overcome this particular problem or issue, we will come up with a solution called retarder. So this retarder will help you to maintain the concrete okay, for longer time in the plastic condition so that you can pump the concrete. So this is a very bad practice followed by the RMC people in the site. Okay, what they are going to do? Simply they will going to mix up in the concrete. They are going to okay, bring the concrete to the site without any monitoring, without any monitoring, okay, then what happens when they are going to pump the concrete, they are not able to pump, they are not able to pump the concrete, what they do for this, simply they will pour the water inside the truck, this is a very bad practice, if you are going to add a water inside the concrete, automatically there will be imbalance in the water cement ratio, if this water cement ratio is imbalanced, it has a direct influence on your strength and durability. So that's why we need to be very cautious as a site engineer while doing a concreting things or while making a concrete practice. Is it clear? Next. 
So an increase in strength is generally obtained with water reducing admixture as a water cement ratio. That's what. The most commonly used retarder is calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate. Okay. It is underground to retard the setting time. Okay. Calcium sulfate is a predominant retarder we are going to use in some dosages to retard. And one more commonly used retarder is sugar. Okay. The sugar is a very good retarder which delays the setting of a concrete. It will maintain the workability of concrete for a longer time. That depends upon the sugar solution you are going to add. A point, okay, a point one percent solution will delay the setting by I can say half an hour to forty-five minutes. Okay, this is about retarders. Next, accelerators. Accelerator is exactly ulta of retarders. There you need to delay the setting time. Here you need to, here you need to. For, okay, make the setting time to get fast. Okay, that is what the difference between these two. What is accelerator? Accelerator admixture is added to concrete to increase the rate of early strength development. Okay, you have, this admixture is added to increase or to obtain the early strength development inside the concrete. Okay, so why 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 you require like this? Because you can remove the fall mark very earlier. Next thing is you can reduce the required period of curing. Next thing, advance the time the structure can be placed in service. You can go with the next floor or next uh, structural component. Okay, partially compensated for the retarding effect of low temperature during cold weather. That means uh, this particular accelerator will be used. Okay, in a condition called cold weather condition. In hot weather, you need to retard the setting time. In cold weather, you need to accelerate the setting time. You need to accelerate the setting time. And this accelerator widely used in emergency repair work. Okay. And the most commonly used material or accelerator is calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is an accelerator widely used as an okay inside the concrete. But nowadays it is used inside some of the soluble because a chloride content inside the concrete may try to damage the properties. That's why we come up with soluble carbonates, silicates, fluorosilicates and some of the organic compounds such as uh, triethanol amine. So these are the compounds uh, we are going to use inside the okay or as a accelerators inside the concrete to okay to get the early strength development inside the concrete. Is it clear? Next, air entraining agents. The next concrete chemical is air entraining agents. Okay. What is this air entraining agents? The air entraining agents are the liquids. Okay. Some okay are added during batching to produce microscopic bubbles called entrained air. Okay. It is a liquid that will be added to create air entrained microscopic bubbles. Okay. So one thing and what to clarify here, okay, there is a difference between entrapped air and entrained air. Entrapped air means artificially, okay, that is, sorry, uh, the voids will be created due to insufficient compaction. That is called entrapped air. Entrained air means artificially we are inducing the voids or what I can say air entraining agents inside the concrete. That means we are decreasing the density. Okay, the air entraining agents mainly are added to decrease the density of concrete. Okay, you can see here, these air bubbles improve the resistance to damage caused by freezing and thawing. So, this is the very, very, very important property does by air entraining. That's why in foreign countries or in the western countries, okay, uh, in for example, in the American code of practice, whatever the concrete mix design you are going to do, compulsory you need to use air and training agents. Compulsory you need to go for air and training agents. Okay, we need to add some percentage of air content inside the concrete. Why? Because it can resist the freezing and thawing problem. Okay, there the freezing and thawing effect will be more. In order to overcome that problem, okay, we are using this, okay, the, uh, what I can say, uh, the air entraining agents, okay, on de-icing salts, okay. And I think, I hope you have explained uh, what exactly is freezing and thawing. So, those ice will be formed, those ice will be expand, it will contract, all those things. So, those problem we can avoid by uh, adding this air entraining agents, okay. And in... Uh, 
Indian code also nowadays. Indian code also nowadays. Okay, this particular year in training agents they have started to use. In 2009 code they have been not been used. Okay, this okay year in training agents. In 1982 code there was year in training agents. In 2009 code they have been removed. Again in 2019 code they have started to use these year in training agents. The main thing is you can reduce the density and another thing is you can overcome the freezing and thawing problem. Next, it is it reduces bleeding and segregation and improves workability. So it can reduce the bleeding problem, it can reduce the segregation problem so that it can enhance the good workability. Next, it is not necessary for interior structural concrete. Okay. Next, in high cement concrete, content concrete, entrained air will reduce strength by about 5% for each 1% added. So this is the one more thing. As I stated, it is a light okay, weight concrete or I can say there will be reduction in strength concrete. By addition of 1%, okay, the overall strength of a concrete can reduce by 5%. Okay. But in low cement con content concrete, adding air has a less effect and may even cause modest increase in strength. Okay. If it is a low cement content, this air in training agents will play a, okay, a very good role I can say. Okay, so this is uh, regarding, okay, this is regarding the concrete chemicals or chemical admixtures. Hope you have understood the concept. Okay, so this is the uh, widely used, okay, concrete chemicals. Okay, nowadays uh, uh, various concrete chemicals has come into picture based upon the requirement, based upon the requirement. Okay, so... Uh, the Fosra company, BASF company, okay, so many companies are manufacturing various concrete chemicals to enhance the properties of concrete or made to make the concrete special. So the various uh, uh, chemical admixtures or concrete chemicals they are using. Is it clear? Fine. So this is regarding the concrete chemicals or chemical admixtures. Hope the concept has been clarified. Okay, and uh, you people have already been read in the uh, lower semester, once again I will repeat this particular topic. So next, coming to the next topic, that is, special elements are compounds used for accelerated strength gain. When you want to accelerate the strength inside the concrete element, when you want to accelerate the strength inside the concrete, we need to use certain special elements. We need to modify the ingredients inside the concrete. We need to modify the mixing inside the concrete. Okay, something we need to do. Okay, so, the, so that it can gain the early rate of strength. So that is what the accelerated strength gain. Let us see that. Why this accelerated strength gain is required? Okay, majorly it is required in repair of concrete structures. When you want to go with the repair of concrete structures, you need to modify the concrete inside. That means you need to accelerate the gain of strength. Okay. And one thing in regarding to the rigid payments is, when there is any crack in the rigid payments or concrete payments, if you want to repair that, okay, that means, that means then you need to stop allowing the traffic. Okay, then immediately you can go with these special elements or special compounds. You can immediately repair or you can go with a emergency repair and you can clear off and you can allow the traffic in the lesser days. Okay, so that's why in repair of certain structures, particularly roadways, that's what bridges, which is essential are very much required. In bridges and road, roadways, okay, when you go with a rigid payments or concrete roads, okay, then these particular elements will play a very, very important role. It may be desired that early strength gain should be as rapid as possible. Why? Because uh, you need to allow the movement for traffic. Okay, so that's why these elements are essential. So based upon the requirement, based upon the requirement, based upon the damage, based upon the distress, you need to modify, you need to come up with a special concrete. That's what I want to say. Okay. Next. Formerly, high doses of calcium chloride were advocated, but this procedure has been rejected. Okay, earlier, they were using calcium chloride as an accelerator, okay, which have been discussed to enhance the strength, but they have been stopped using this calcium chloride. Why? This calcium chloride will lead to another problem called 
corrosion corrosion so hence this using of calcium chloride as an accelerator in order to achieve early strength development has been stopped then which compound is used the time of setting of portland cement concrete and its strength gain may be shortened by use of calcium aluminate cement instead of that calcium chloride okay we can go ahead with a calcium aluminate cement okay by using this calcium aluminate cement okay which will accelerate which will accelerate so that you can achieve the early rate of strength development in the concrete so we need to modify we need to modify next because of the problem associated with the conversion and under hot humid condition of the calcium aluminate hydrate from one form to another and the resultant strength losses other types of cements have been preferred so now one more problem has been faced in the calcium aluminate cement okay especially in the hot humid condition okay this calcium aluminate hydrate that is cah okay will which will be formed okay that whatever the calcium aluminate hydrate you already know that uh, microstructure once the calcium aluminate cement combines with water which will hydrate and will give a calcium aluminate hydrate compound just like your csh hydrated compound if this calcium aluminate hydrate compound is formed okay this will lead to the loss of strength so hence they have stopped using this one also next regulated set cement is a modified portland cement okay next they have come up with a new cement which contains substantial amount of calcium fluoroaluminate instead of calcium aluminate they have used a fluoro compound that is calcium fluoroaluminate they started to use this cement mill contains substantial amount of fluoride as a substitute for limestone okay this fluoride they will be started to use as a substantial for a this uh, limestone compound so it is a very good thing if you going to reduce the limestone content inside the a uh, cement you can uh, uh, minimize the carbon dioxide gas also because you already know that by burning limestone only enormous carbon dioxide gases will be liberated in the cement industry this can be minimized the burning process has a problem with the release of small amount of fluorocom that's what here also they are going to face okay the fluoro compounds when prepared and ground the initial and final set of this type of cement occurs almost simultaneously and therefore the time between mixing and set is often referred to as handling time as a rule this varies between 2 to 45 minutes so by using calcium fluoro aluminates you can make the concrete to develop strength within 45 minutes or 2 to 45 minutes so this is the level of accelerating you can go ahead with calcium fluoro aluminate cement next some special cement based on chemical reactions which are completely different from those of normal portland cement okay this includes fast setting magnesium phosphate and aluminium phosphate cement okay one thing i have been told calcium fluoro aluminate cement instead of that if you want a fast setting you can go with a aluminium phosphate cement and magnesium phosphate cement okay when used for concrete patching for pavements and allow traffic flow for 45 minutes you can early we can achieve still earlier so within 45 minutes you can allow the traffic for movement by using this magnesium phosphate or i can using the aluminium phosphate okay so this is uh, regarding your river okay what i can say early rate of strength development inside the concrete or the special elements earlier calcium chloride we have stopped using later on we came up with a calcium aluminate hydrate okay this sorry calcium aluminate cement so this calcium aluminate cement leads to the reduction in strength and later on we have started to use a calcium fluoro aluminate cement so calcium by using the calcium fluoro aluminate we can go with a early rate of strength development okay apart from this we can also go with a magnesium phosphate and aluminium phosphate cement okay magnesium phosphate cement and aluminium phosphate cement by using these two compounds or okay the chemicals okay we can get early rate of strength development inside the concrete so this early rate of strength development is essential when you going with a repair work okay especially in the concrete road or a bridges normally we cannot go ahead normally we cannot go ahead with these practices 
is this particular demand that is early rate of strength is required only at the circumstance of emergency repair work is it clear hope the concept has been clarified okay that means what i am trying to explain here is based upon the distress based upon the damage based upon the demand we need to go or come up with a solution okay so that's what the civil engineering uh, uh, plays a role so next coming to the special mortar okay special mortar what is mortar what is mortar you already know mortar is defined as it is a mixture of cement fine aggregate and a water okay so that will be called as a mortar now it is called special mortar what is special mortar the mortar will be special only by ingredients let us see that the first one is cement clay mortar okay what is that here clay is introduced as an effectively fine ground additive in quantities the clay will be finely grounded and it will be added in a proportion of 1 is to 1 why the addition of clay improves the grain composition so that the water retaining ability and the workability of the mortar and the density can be enhanced the water retentivity property is very 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 important in the mortar you already know in the masonry you already know in the masonry the mortar should possess very good water retentivity property that means the mortar should hold the water content for a longer time okay it should not get evaporated okay and the brick as an opposite the brick has a tendency to absorb those water content that's why that's why okay we need to modify the mortar in such a way that we need to modify the mortar in such a way that the that mortar should hold the water for a longer time that's what water retentivity property okay next coming to the lightweight and heavy mortar lightweight and heavy mortar okay the lightweight mortar is nothing but these are prepared from porous sand porous sand especially from pumice you already know from the geology the pumice stone is a lightweight stone okay which is a porous okay which is a porous so those okay as a sand you can use it inside the mortar they are also prepared by mixing wood powder wood shaving sawdust with cement mortar or lime mortar okay so these are all the combination we can go with a lightweight mortar okay and this mortar having a density of lesser than 15 kilo newton per meter cube or 1500 kg per meter cube so this is the density you can obtain 1200 1300 something like that coming to the heavy mortar these are prepared from heavy quartz or other sands okay they have a bulk density of more than 15 kilo newton per meter cube quite opposite to that of okay there in lightweight mortar you are going to use a pumice stone here you can use a quartz sand so slight modification so that the mortar will become special instead of using a normal sand you can go with a special sand or cement that is what called special mortar next decorative mortar that means adding color pigments inside the mortar that is these mortars are obtained by using color cement or pigments and a regular fine aggregate of appropriate color texture and surface can be obtained okay next air entrained mortar the same thing you are introducing air entraining agents inside the mortar okay that is the work qualities of lean cement sand mortar can be improved by entraining air agents inside okay so this air bubble increases the volume of the binder paste and help to fill up the voids in the sand okay automatically that particular bubbles will be formed those bubble will act like a sand so that whatever the voids between the sand will be there so those voids will be filled up by these air bubbles the air entraining also makes the mortar weight and better heat and sound insulator okay that means lightweight gypsum mortar okay gypsum mortar will be done by adding gypsum content but you need to be very cautious while using gypsum okay because you already know that the gypsum will make the flash setting okay or false setting fire resistant mortar okay it is prepared by adding aluminum cement to a finely crushed powder of fine bricks okay proportion being one part of aluminum cement to two parts of powder that means by adding alumina to the 
powdered clay that is surki okay usually it is called surki mortar surki mortar you already know that powder burnt clay so to that if i am going to add a aluminium compound in a proportion of 1 is to 2 i can prepare the fire resistant mortar so like this okay we can prepare the mortar based upon the that means by modifying the ingredients we can make a special mortar so these are also this special mortar is not suitable for all the purpose it will be used in the special cases once again the sound absorbing mortar here also a small change in the ingredients cement lime gypsum slag and aggregates the bulk density of such a mortar varies from 6 to you already know that decrease in density will make you the sound absorbing sound absorbing mortar okay so this is uh, regarding your special mortar okay this is also as i told will be used in a special circumstances hope the concept has been clarified so today we have been discussed regarding epoxy resin we have been discussed concrete chemicals we have been discussed special elements for accelerated strength gain and we have been discussed the special mortar okay so these are all the things okay you should know okay in the next session we look into the some more concepts for techniques or materials used for repair so thank you for this session